Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are looking at this beautiful vintage quilt. Um, it's quite long video and I basically talk through the whole bit of it, showing you the decisions I make in um, quilting this meandering long arm feather throughout this entire quilt. Um, so if you ever had a quilt with a lot of white background, um, very similar to this, where you just would like a feather background, but you're not quite sure how to do it, where to go, what to, you know, this, this is what I attempt to show you in this quilt. The decisions I make on when to curve and how big the feathers and all that good stuff. Um, this is a customer quilt. It was given to me to quilt um, by my friend who rescued it from ending up at Goodwill or in the garbage or in recycling or whatever. She saw the beauty in it. Um, it's an applique quilt that wasn't quite finished, as you will see. So here we go. One more second. <laughs> so these are there long arm feathers where you just swoop out and back as opposed to the hump and bump feathers would be like that and then back like that. So we're not doing those. So I am ditching all the applique. I already did that part. And we'll put a little center flip in here. Um, there is no good way to get out of here, is there? Sometimes you just gotta go with it. So this is all free motion um, on a Gamo Vision 2, not that that matters. Um, I am in um, regulated mode at 12 stitches per inch. I have 60 white um, thread in the bobbin and I am using 40 weight poly on the top. And a matching tone of cream. And I'm just kind of you know, there's really no rhyme or reason. Now here I'm ditching as I go. So there is really kind of no rhyme or reason to my feathers other than I want to uniformly fill everything in. So I might do a long reach. I did a short one there because I'm going to come up on this stem here and do the other half. But we'll do that when I come back to it. So we have a stem there. We can put some feathers along that. Now, for Learning how to shape these feathers, I recommend Beth Ann Nemish, um, her class called Fiesta Feathers. I'll put a link in the description. She has a cool way of teaching you um, how to shape these feathers. And it's an easy way to remember 
She, <laughs> she akins it to taking off like an airplane or taking off like a helicopter. So um, check out her class. It's expensive, but it is worth every penny. So she is one of my favorite teachers. Again, I'm ditching this part as I go. So I'm gonna well, part of what I consider is my um, let's see how do we want to do this? go this way. Let's see how it turns out. You know, there really is no wrong way to do this. I really do believe that. As long as your feathers are fluid, consistent, and not messy. So like here, I don't want to overstitch that much, so I'm just going to tie off and come back out. Um, and we gotta catch this up up here so it doesn't look like I did a stitch in the ditch there. So I need a longer cord for my microphone. So around these, just go slow. If they're not perfect, it's okay. Like I said, it's matching thread. No one's gonna see it unless they get their head like six inches below it. You know, and that's just not gonna happen. You know, you're gonna be standing next to a bed where this is in place, you're going to be several feet away. So don't sweat it. Just get it done. I think I'm just going to ditch this and then come back off of it with my feathers. So we've got, I don't know how far I can, oh, I can go pretty far here. I'm going to split this space. And when I run out of throat space, which is going to be right about there, um, we're just going to move it on up. So it's a water soluble, um, air pen. So let's see if we go, come out here, we got to fill this space and maybe weave this around somehow, split the distance between here and there. There's a little motif here that would have been an applique, but, um, Whoever did this never got around to it. So I think we're going to split the difference here. We'll come up this way. And then we'll follow. Kind of do a Yui. I want to kind of come out there. How about something like that? There's our path. So I have a flower right here. And I have a flower right here that I'm going to put in. And then this will be our path. So I have my game plan. And I'm going up because, well, let's move. 
Hold on, I gotta move the machine up a little bit. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm playing with my microphone because it's too short. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Okay, so we're going to follow this path. So we're going to hug that again. So we're just going to fill in the space. And we're going to do about the same distance. Here's my line. We're going to do about the, we're going to come out to here and um, go about, and just make it pretty. Keep it nice and clean. Follow your line as best you can. And remember, that line is a guide. Once, you know, humidity hits it, that line is going to disappear. So if you miss the line, don't worry about it. We're going to stay in between. All right. Now keeping, keeping your stitching clean. I'm going to turn my light off. Okay, so much better, right? And see that line has almost disappeared already. So there's our line going that way. So let me just draw it again. So we're coming out here. And, oh, you know what? We're going to pull right into, into that. That'll be good. All right. So, oh, what I was saying. Keeping your stitching clean um, means you don't have layer upon layer of thread on top of each other. See how the lines of thread go side by side? That's what you want to do. That looks a lot better than stacking thread. Oh, hold on. Okay, too many wires on top of each other. a way to travel, just echo and come back down. So here we are at this motif. Do you see it right here? So we're going to fill that in right now. So pretending there's an applique there. That was the stem. Hold on, i got to move my head down a little bit. Okay. So I haven't stabilized this quilt yet, but moving just a couple inches like that is not going to be a big deal. So, but don't, you know, don't advance an entire row per se before you stabilize the area. Another one in here. Now on this, these motifs, to make these really stand out, I am going to put several layers 
of thread in here. Just I'll do a little thread painting. But first, I'll put some vines in these leaves just to make it stand out from the feathers. Again, I missed that line a little bit, but once this quilt is washed, you're not going to see that line. So just go for it. Okay. And do a really tight echo or even just smoosh the stitches on top of each other. That would be fine too. But you have to define the space so that it doesn't get lost in your feathers. Because the size of these petals is about the same size as the feathers. Oh, forgot a, a vine there. And this is kind of a really good example where stacking thread, see how messy that can look when you've got layer upon layer upon layer of thread? If that were your feathers, it would look kind of messy. Unless you really did it everywhere and with intent, like we're doing it here, which doesn't make it look messy, it makes it stand out. So I'm going to come over and put one more feather right here. And then we'll give this an echo, fill this in a little bit, and then we'll change direction. Do you see how easy that is? We just changed direction. And there's the purple line that I drew before, but again, it's a purple line. You know, it disappears. So here's our next flower outline right here. So I want to stay away from that. So I'm going to use this as my spine, and we're just going to come right around that and round this circle around this flower motif. All right. So use that petal. This is now your spine. See how nice we're rounding that corner? And we're coming out. So where are we going to go now? All right, we've got applique here. We've got our makeshift applique there. And we've got open space back here we need to fill in. So let's just finish this vine. And we'll come up into here and just give this a little wiggle and come down this way. And then we can do some some feathers next to that um, stem right there. But um, let's finish this off and fill in this corner right here. So we'll pull this up a little. See, I'm changing my mind already. So we're going to stay away from that stem because that will get its own set of petals. So you know what? We are coming up into this area that we haven't done yet, so let's just go there. So we're going to come up. Okay. And we're going to use this petal as our stem. So let's see how that works. Come back around. And we're gonna s let's come back here. Here we go. And we didn't have to tie off. We're gonna come back and we'll do this bottom half later. We're gonna cut across here, ditch our tulip, come down the spine, 
And up. Come back and we'll fill this in. Cuddle. 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 And a little cuddle. All right. So since we're right here, let's stitch the flower. Oh, and we're on the inside here on a stem. So let's do that. And we'll finish off ditching. Come back around. Let's catch this while we're here. All right, so we'll go around that a couple times. Cut across. And continue with our ditching. Now we're back here at a stem. So a stem has petals. So let's give it some petals. And do our tulip. And there. All right. So if you notice over here, I haven't tacked that down yet. So I need to do that before I do too much stitching in here. So let's pick something to get us over there. And I think this is just the ticket so we're gonna fill this space and ditch this as we go and we'll fill that in we're just gonna go right off the edge here And I am holding on so it doesn't move on me. And we're off. So now we're going to ditch this. Or tap down the sides. I found I don't like to tie off a million times. Then we can come back. Now, remember to stay away from your your edge if that's important to you you want to keep about a half inch away from your edge so that you're not burying your feathers underneath your um binding okay but in this case i don't think it matters so we've got a nice space here for a nice double um feather to come just straight back out here i think that would look really nice the other option we could do is echo back and bring this on out. I think I'm gonna echo back. I think I might like that better. So just quarter inch echo. Use your hopping foot. The outside of that foot stays. And I'm just gonna fill in the space. Now see how I'm staying away? That you can do and then we'll just echo out. And it's nice and clean. And I'm going to tie off here because I have an area back toward the middle of the quilt that I want to fill in before I advance too far. So I'll show you. So I'll take my clamp off and then let me turn this so you can see. Uh, anyway, a little bit better. I don't have as much motion here. Okay, that's good. So see, we did, here's the bottom, 
there's my rail right there okay so I can only get to eh, about there so anyway take a look here all that quilting here's our empty spot that we haven't done so since I only have an 18 inch throat I'm just gonna advance the quilt so I can fill in this area oh, sorry I've got a different attachment on my long arm for this camera and it's a little um, more rigid than the last one. Okay. So let's do our flower first. Do you see the, the flower here? And some leaves. It's kind of messy. There's a leaf there. There's a flower petal there. I don't know what they intended there, but I think I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just put a nice flower petal in here. Oh, and pick up my thread. So let's do the circle, the inner circle first. It's always a good place to start, right? And again, you know, don't sweat it if it's not perfect. What flower is perfect? No two flowers are ever the same, so just don't sweat it, okay? All right, petal, um, flower petals. I'm going to do the stems later. Now this has very wide petal, and this one we're just going to make it up as we go. a leaf right there so well, let's get the leaf kind of a leaf in the background and that has ooh, a tulip stem coming out here so let's give this tulip a little What else do I see? There's another leaf leaf right here. These are drawn in pretty well on most of the, and there's a stem right there. So let's give this baby a stem. We'll do some leaf veining. And let's bring in that stem. Do a little cut end. And come back up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then vein. Another leaf vein. So, that looks pretty decent. I think it needs a little a little leaf right here. I'm not drawn in, but let's just do that. I 
You know what? Let's put one on this side. This is kind of a center motif. Well, we can do a little bit extra. All right, and then we'll echo and thread paint a little bit to give it some more definition. Otherwise, you're just not going to see it. It'll just get lost in that sea of feathers. All right, so let's start some echoes. Two, three echoes should be good. You know who else teaches really good um, lessons about echoing and the need for echoing echoing is Carly Porter she um, teaches she has a couple classes CarlyPorter.com she's the same lady that started and owns the company Honest Fabric you know the pre-printed quilt panels if you've not tried one of those I highly recommend it, especially if you don't have time to do piecing anymore. <laughs> All right, one more time around. Either an echo or thread painting, whatever you can do. Whatever your machine decides to do, I think sometimes is the case. Now see how messy? That can look really messy, but when we stick it in with the flowers, it gives definition. Okay, anyway, I digress. Carly Porter, thread painting. Um, echoing, not thread painting, echoing. She teaches graffiti quilting. And whether you like graffiti quilting or not, it is an excellent class to teach you a variety of different motifs that you can use in just about any quilt. Um, where do we, okay. Um, let's see, we got this space to fill in here. So how are we gonna do that? I think we're going to come back over here and continue this feather coming this way. I think that makes more sense. So I'm going to paint over some of these existing lines to get over there. So anyway, Carly Porter and um, um, <laughs> echo quilting and the need for echo quilting and its purpose. She has, uh, again, a very expensive class, a couple classes, but the graffiti quilting class will teach you an amazing array of techniques and the importance of echoing. She calls it her wingmen. So if you have an opportunity to take one of her classes, it is well, well worth it. So let's continue on here. And we'll fill in the space. Again, no rhyme or reason. We're just wanting to fill in the space as best we can. And let's bring this down. going to fill in this corner here and let's see where that takes us. That's pretty cool. Let's see what happens. And we'll fill in this. Ah, now we're back on a straight shot more or less. I made that a little bigger. Because you want to fill in that space. I have my hand right here for a reason. 
it tells me how far I can go before I bump my rail so that I don't end up with you know nice smooth and round and then a flat edge where I bumped and dragged along the rail so that's why I have my hand there so where are we gonna go see this is all coming out and this is all coming out so let's just fill in this corner and um, then let these feathers come on out. So we're going to come over here. And I fall back around. Now we're going to cheat here. Yeah. I'm going to pretend that's part of a flower or a part of a feather later. So we'll hook right back onto that when we come back. Now we ditched this tulip already. So let's come up the other side and see this little stem. We'll use the stem to do it. And we'll pull all the way over to fill that in. How's that? Come back around because we finished that. And come back here. And back down. Now you could have tied off. Or, I gotta get the hang of this. Oh, bear with me here. This is kind of stiff. Okay. So, how do you know what's good enough? If you're, the space that you haven't quilted is no bigger than the space, than the size of your feather, your biggest, biggest, biggest feather fans, then you're okay. In fact, one of the things that I had issues with um, in the beginning was over quilting and it just looked messy so I'm going to put some little ones in here because I want to come out both sides and hey, there we go we closed it off and it looks totally legit come down this side now we got another stem here so we're just going to come up the stem and we'll follow the stem around Getting close to my rail here. So I think I'm going to end it. Well, I'm going to come up here. We'll come this way and just fill in that space. And one more. And we'll end it right there. A couple tie off stitches. So I'm going to tie off, I think. Actually, I don't need to. Let's come down this stem. Come back over here, find a nice transition to the other side. Yeah, we'll um, outline the feathers so we can, feathers, petals, so we can tie them down. Did that already. Let's finish off this leaf. Oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. That's all right, we can come back. Okay, I admit that was messy. Sorry. But am I going to take it out? I don't think so. This is going to be so busy. Honestly, no one is going to notice. We'll echo back. Nice clean echo. Fill in that. Come up. Again, we haven't ditched that leaf yet, so we're going to do that as we go. And one more. There. We'll come down. Spine. This time, 
I'm going to come up here rather than out this way because I'm running out of room. And I don't want to stop yet. So we're going to pull these feathers up this way. Now see, we're starting. So this it looks fine. So, but with these two side by side, we can start a new arm now. So where are we going to go, right? So we have all that open area there. So, oh, and we've got a flower right here. So we can't go too far. So right here's the edge of my little flower. So we're going to put that in. And I think we're just going to come this way. Okay, we have our path. Yay! Now we're getting into a little... Well, we'll just make these smaller. Because we have a little gap here and we're going to have to finish, fill that, right? So, to make it not look silly, we should have our feathers somewhat relatively the same size. We're going to... All right, and there is my flower. Do our circle. I don't know how well you can see this. A little doohickey. There's our flower. So you know what? To fill this in, let's give it a little stem. And we'll echo that stem. A little. We're going to have to come down one side and up the other. Because I don't want to cross that open stem but look how nicely we just filled that in all right come back put some veins in here try to do a wiggle to your line I think that looks better than a straight line just any kind of a curve your line and don't make them all the same length make them different lengths I think that looks really cool again remember the flowers no two flowers are ever the same all right so what did we do before we echoed right I'm gonna move the camera again there we go I'm gonna center it a little better okay so we're gonna I want to just Thicken this outer outline so it doesn't get lost in the feathers. And maybe one or two more times. We'll make it a little sloppy, make it a little more defined. There we go. How do you like them apples? <laughs> okay, so moving right along. Let's, um, hmm. All right, so I have a flower over here. See that? And I'm not too far away from that. And right here, just off the camera, down here is the edge of my, so I can't do a whole lot more. So, and since this, I like to come out from the flowers, I think I'm going to tie off, or echo, let's do the echo. So let's put this back. Oh. We'll echo on over here. And we'll, we'll work on this flower. There we go. All right, got a stem. So let's do some feathers on that stem and echo it as we go. Not echo it, ditch it. 
Because I like to ditch all the applique. Alright, and I'm about out of space. I'm at the bottom of my arm. So let's come back in here. And let's branch out this way. And just come across. And we're going to hug that little flower we just painted in. And just come across here. And we'll end it at some point with just a feather right on the end. And back and forth a couple times. And there we go. And I think that looks pretty. So I'm tying off because I don't want to do too many echoes. And I'm pretty much, see right here is my, I can't go much further. So this isn't very far. So I don't want to risk running into my um, rail. So let's, whoops, what was that? All right, so we'll we'll stabilize the side here by just stitching down to the rail. And we'll come back up. And I came out there. So let's see if we can do a little echo here. And kind of Yeah. Let's echo back in, and we'll come out from the flower. I like coming out from the flower. I just think that looks, hold on, let me move the camera a little bit. There you go. Um, just think that looks a little more organic. Do some flowers. And, up. and I don't think we've ditched this yet. So let's do that. Alright, come back this way. area over here to do yet. So how do we get there? Um, you know, I think I want to come out from this leaf and come down this way. So let's follow the applique back over. And we'll start a new new thread. Okay, so I don't like straight lines. I'm going to end right about here. So let's do a little wiggle like that. Try not to do straight lines because those are just too boring. Too, and too, not just boring, but also so easy to see every last mistake, you know? So if you break it up, again, half inch from the end, so that we don't cut off our petals with the binding. Bring that on over. Now I'm almost out of space here. So let's just butt this off. There we go. Just like that. All right. Now I am seeing 
little teeny tiny I don't know if you can see them here see the little loop-de-loop -loop there and a little looseness there and there so I'm either getting to the end of my bobbin or um, I have a tension issue most likely in the bobbin because um, I'm getting fuzzy buildup. So I'm going to take the machine down to the other end. Don't get seasick on me. And um, there we are. And yes, I did cut it off. Yay! <laughs> All right. So I still have plenty of bobbin. I use these um, um, they're magnetic. See the magnetic core? Um, I like those. So when I get those fuzzies, I, um, see this little paintbrush? I will take my paintbrush and just get all the gunk out of here. All right. So there's a little bit, not much. It's pretty cool. And then you want to make sure your spring. I put my, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to take this back out, but I want to show you. So put it through the loop, and then this is dangling, see how it's going? That's looser than I want it. So I know I have issues, this is your spring on your bobbin. So there's a little up end where you can just gently um, Put your pin, see how that goes up? Put your pin in there and see how much dirt already came out of there? See that fuzz on the end there? That's what's keeping that. So I slide the pin and then I blow on it. <laughs> just get it up to your lips and blow. And then wipe that pin through just a couple times. And then put your bobbin back in. And you can't put this in wrong because the magnetic goes to the inside. And when you use these, notice there's not that spring thing on the inside. You got to take that out. All right. So if you use magnetic bobbins, don't use that springy thing. You want to take that out, loop it under there. And now see that thing is not moving. And that's exactly where I want my bobbin. So I know my bobbin's good. Now I got to clean out underneath here. So I. I have this, um, and I just, um, I'm away from my rail. My rails are way back there, okay? So be sure you're in front of your rails or you're getting all this gunk in your rails. All right, so, and you can see the bristles kind of come through up here. And I'm going to, look at all that gunk that came off. Eek. And that's, I'm using... Cotton batting is the worst at generating all this fuzz. And that fuzz is going to... I found that fuzz has more to do with tension issues than anything else. Okay? So I clean it out real good until I get nothing else coming out. And then I get my handy dandy and one of these oil cans. And then there's a... I can't see it, and I don't want to move the camera. Um, put just a drop of oil on that on that ring, so, and I do this every time I check my bobbin. Okay, pop your bobbin back in. Make sure you hear the click. There I go. Cut off a little excess, and you're in business again. All right, now you can do a little sample out to the side. Um, sometimes I will put a little bit of scrap fabric on the edge here and just do a test to see how my tension is going, especially if I've um, changed thread, um, went to a different thread. So look at how pretty this is. See that flower we just did? How cool is that? So, and then the other flower we did, not pretty. So I like that. So where did we end? We end it. So I'm gonna cut that off. So here's where we ended, right here. 
It's a good, it's a good way to stop anywhere because you can always butt back up to that. So I'm moving the machine at the at the, my belly rail, right? So we're pretty good everywhere except right here. We got another flower to do right there. See the outline? You can just faintly see it. So we're going to do that next. Okay. All right. So I start with the circle because it gives me a good starting point. And then out of the way, pick up my fuzz. I should have started on the, uh, stopped on the other side. And then I'll trim my thread. All right, and we're off to the races. A couple more times around. And do my paddles. Again, if you don't hit the line exactly, not a big deal, because these are going to wash off anyway. Right? And then put in your little spikes. Again, don't make them straight. They just look prettier when they're not. And there's a little bit of a curve to them. And they're not all the same. Different heights, different curves. How pretty that is. So, echo, echo, thread paint, whatever your preference is, but you gotta make that stand out. Because it's gotta differentiate. So we'll do some thread painting in between there. Thicken up that line. Again, you want it to stand out from the feathers, right? Otherwise, it's kind of useless. Okay, all right, so what are we gonna do next? Let's come up here, kind of close there, and we can do a vein down leaving enough room while well, this comes down and that goes up. Hmm. What do we want to do? I think I want to just come over here and come out from this. So I'm going to tie off and come over here. Let's start. Let's put this down. It's always good to stabilize your sides because then nothing you do is going to draw your quilt in. Okay. All right. Now, since I want to come out from this applique, I'm going to tie this off. Okay. So, we're coming we're coming out and this direction is down. This direction is up. So many, so many choices. Now, see the flower down here is coming up, and this flower is coming down. <gasps> oh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a little Amish curl here. We're gonna come down this spine and then do a curly cue up. And then as we come up down here, we're gonna do two, we're gonna do a curl that way. Ooh, I think that's a good idea. So here's our spine here. We're gonna shoot off and do a curl there. Oh, I like that. All right, so let's do that. So we still need to ditch this side. So let's start up here. And we'll do this spine as we go. 
Well, um, then we're gonna bring it right up. One more. And now, right alongside there, see? And this is about as far down as I can go, so that works with how much space I have. Again, I use my hand to make sure that um, I get a nice curve at the bottom before I hit my rail. So that's what my hand, my other hand, is doing down here. And we're going to bring this all the way out to about a half inch from the side. Okay. So I'll curl this around. Catch up the outside. So here you had a choice. I could have either made one big humongous one or split the difference so that I can get two in there. And I decided to split the difference. So as you get to the end of any open space, keep that in mind. You know, how much space do I have? And do I split it in twos? Do I split it in thirds? And here we go. We are at the end. And look at that pretty little curve. That's curves like this, especially when it curves into itself, makes it just gives the quilt just and your quilting character. So while we're here, let's um let's stitch this. So we're gonna start here and we wanna I wanna um I can't get all the way down here. Alright, so we're just gonna go to the end of this. So let's just start there. And we're gonna ditch our way back and then quilt our way out, crossing back over. All right, so we're going to go down this stem, throw in a, just to fill that space, and we'll do the flower, and then here's another stem, so I think we'll do, because we, um, feathers look good coming off a stem and since we have a defined stem right here let's bring the feathers off that and just fill in this little space here and again we're ditching the stem as we go gonna ditch that bring it out oh and just one more and come around and let's see, I think I can travel. So we're gonna travel back here. We'll come around the bottom side, do some of this stem, and then, ooh, use this as a curve to work our way back up. And that, I think that'll look cool, but let's get rid of this first. So, ooh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be pretty. So we're gonna travel over here come down this stem and then come off this stem and kind of do a bit of a curve and fill in that space. Well, that's going to be pretty. All right. All right, let's go. So we're going to cross, go back down, around. Okay, so... We're going to do this stem. You know what? we got to do this flower and come back or it won't get ditched. So I'm going to finish off ditching this flower. Ooh, and you know what? While we're up here, let's fill this in again. Quilting off the stem. Coming up. Nice direction. And we'll come back down, travel back to the stem down here. There we go. Oops. 
I can come down a little bit, so we'll go that far. And right there's the tip of our next flower that we're going to do. So we're going to fill in that empty space. And I've got enough room to do that. And we'll fill this in all the way up to that flower as we go. And that is going to be pretty. And we're going to round the loop here. Fill in your space. Nice, gentle curves. Just fill in that space. Since this is a nice little corner, little curve, we're going to make that our spine that we're going to follow fill the rest of this in. And our end piece. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look how nice that curved. Yeah, baby. Okay. So where are we going to go next? I think over here, we've got that center, I can't turn it enough, but that center um, ribbon is right there. So I want to come out from that. So I'm going to tie off here. And yeah, look at that. Look how pretty that turned out. Isn't that neat? Okay, so we have this space right here right in here but we don't have a whole lot to work with and since we're pretty much at the rail with everything else let's go ahead and advance the quilt so i have a little more room to work with so hold on So we have another flower. See the flower right there? The motif, we're gonna put that in. So let's put that in first, cause that'll define where we can go and what we can do. It fills space, right? Less empty space is always less intimidating. So since these are already marked for us, that's a good way fill some space. All right. Okay. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, we got a petal here. And a petal here. to here yeah. there we go and we'll put in our little I think these are called stamens right I don't know again vary the sizes vary the shape this is one case where variation gives a lot of nice interest. Okay, go up back to the outside and do a little thread painting to make that nice and defined. Put our feathers around it. A little bit of an echo. Just set it off. Otherwise, 
If you don't make it show up, what's the point in doing it, right? All right, I think that's good. So I'm gonna tie off here because I have no way of getting from here to there and I don't wanna echo all the way over. I don't know, maybe that would be okay, but I don't know. So let's come over here. Oh, you know what we're gonna do on the inside here? We're just gonna do a feather all around. So let's see how that, we're gonna use this as a spine, right? So do we want the feathers all coming out and coming to here, or do we wanna do a complete circle? Either way would look nice. So let's put a center, let's have them come out. Yeah, and it looks kind of like these ribbons meet here maybe, or cross, I don't know, whatever. I think the easiest way to do this is gonna be just to draw kind of a center line. So we're gonna do feathers, we're gonna use this as the spine, right? And we're gonna have the feathers come out to that line so the feather heads meet in the middle and come to the end here. I think that'll be pretty. So let's, so let's do our stitch in, you know, we don't need to do a stitch in the ditch. Well, we'll do the stitch in the ditch as we do our feathers. Well, let's just do it. And well, it'll be done and we won't have to backtrack at all, right? There are a hundred different ways to do anything, you guys, and whatever way you choose, you know, it's going to be fine. So, all right, let's get us started. We'll just do a loop-de-loop -loop here, and then we'll come out to the line. Oh, you know what? The smart thing would have been get back out to that line. Backtrack your way back down and up. There you go. Okay, so we got the inside done. That looks kind of cool. Let's trim the threads. And so we've got all this little stitching right here. I'm going to use that to cheat and come to the outside without having to tie off because you'll never see it. All right. So let's do the same thing on the outside. Let's use this as a spine and we'll end right here. That'll look kind of cool. And we'll come over to this side. Well, we gotta go all the way to the back there. Because we need to ditch this. So let's do that, di that ditching as we come out with some feathers here. So I'm going to end that there. We'll just do this and then we'll come back to it. I just want to make sure I get all the applique ditched. that's something easy to miss and that might be a problem for the user when they wash it and it bubbles up I wouldn't want that to happen so I'm gonna go ahead and come up just to make sure I get it all ditched 
and come back down this side. All right, so I want the one side to match the other just because that's what I want. So how we did the, the feathers out on this side, I'm gonna have the feathers come out on this side. So I'm switching spines from this side to that side. <sighs> yeah, that'll be good. And we'll just fill in this space down here as we do that. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So what are you going to do in here? That's always a good question. But, um, hmm. Let's see. We could just come up and do kind of a leaf in there. Or let's use one of these as a spine and come out and go back up. Oh, I think that's what we'll do. We'll use that as a spine, come out there, and maybe go that way. I don't know. Let's try that. So I went out here and up, and then maybe a Y off, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So we're going to do this. That doesn't look bad. Again, my hand is some close to my rail, so my hand is gauging how close I'm getting to my rail, so I don't... Now on here, see how close we are to the flower? We're going to try and fill all that in. So I'm going to come over and make just a nice, bigger... So with this, we're just going to use this to fill in any remaining space we got. So I think I'm going to do that, use that now as my spine and just use that spine for filling in the rest of this. I like it. Hot dog, what do you think? And there we are. So, I'm gonna tie off, take a look. Isn't that cool? That filled it in just nicely. Okay. We're doing good. Progress. All right. I'm going to tie off here and start at a new spot. Because if I were to backtrack, I don't really have room to echo. So, also, I'm going to advance the quilt some more. Because, again, here's my rail, right? So, here's my rail. I don't have that much space. But, see this spot right here? I'm going to fill that in. And there's my little little um, stem. So I'm going to use that stem to fill in this little piece that we missed before. So. And tie off. So I don't know about your table, but my table is not perfectly level, which is why I put my finger there when I go to tie off. And actually I could come around and do the same thing on the other side. Fill that in a little bit more before I advance. So... Let's see if we can fill this whole area in. Mm. 
I'm going to get a little bit smaller as I get to the head of the flower and just pop one in right there. Now, this flower, let me try and turn this. See, now that's coming out this way. So I'm over here. I don't, I want to go with the direction of the applique. So I could continue on and work my way over, but I don't want to do that because I want to work with the direction of my applique. So once again, <laughs> I'm going to tie off here. So, and then we'll come back over here. Let's see, none of this is stitched. So, let's see. The last of the ditching, I think, ended right there. So I'm going to do this. I have room to just barely scooch by that. So I'm going to ditch this whole thing. And then we'll come back over to the right over there. And we'll start with the feathers. And cut that. Okay, oh, extra thread. All right, so we're just going to ditch the applique. And it's not perfect, but it's okay. You're never going to see that. Unless your nose is... I mean, this camera is, what, six inches from my quilt top, so... You know, nobody is going to look at this quilt that close. I'm going to squeeze on by there. So if you get a little wobble or you're off a little bit, don't worry about it. You can use a ruler. They make rulers that hug your foot, and you can use the ruler. But that takes a long time to use a ruler to ditch applique. And if you just go slow in the beginning and just trust yourself... You can do this without a ruler, I promise you. I started out using a ruler, but I really don't have the patience. Look at those nasty fingers. I've been working in the yard. It is April 30th, 2022, and we still don't have buds. We, don't, we still don't have leaves on our trees. There are barely buds on some of the trees. Some of the trees. Because we still have snow on the ground. Anywhere that snow was like, you know, put in piles, those piles aren't gone yet. It is April 30th. That is insane how cold it's been this year. Okay, I digress. I'm sorry. All right, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. So... This applique is going out this way, so that's how our flowers are going to go. Our feathers are going to go. So I think I'm going to feather out this leaf here and then echo back, come around here, and then feather out this using this as a stem here. So let's do that. So tiny ones, relatively tiny ones, maybe one more to get to the tip, follow that back down, or you could have done an echo, and there we are, but you're just filling in the space. Oh, cool. Now there's not enough room there. So I'm going to fill off, use this stem as a spine. Come up this way. Again, filling the space as I go. Now here we have a choice. Um, and I think 
I'm going to put one more here just to fill in this space and come and then when in let's see I can get this side yet so we'll backtrack down this stem I think I'll use this stem oh hold on I gotta get the phone I'll be right back okay I'm back so we were coming down this spine and then I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to somehow make a transition. So we'll do this and let's just echo our way over. See how neat that looks? And change spines. See that looks alright because it's clean. And moving right along. Now see how big these guys are? We're going to try and mirror that. So I'm going to let these guys on this side get a little bit bigger. And I got to fill in the spot. So let's make start making these a little bit bigger. And then again, we're going to put one on the end. And now we have room to start a new vein. Look at that. And we'll just kind of end it there because I am at my rail. But, here, let me tie off and I'll show you. So, oops, look at that. That looks cool. So we started over here. We switched spines from one to the other and came on out. I like it. I do declare I like it. All right, so we have some space right here. Oh, we got another flower to do right here before I advance the quilt. So let's do that next. You're going to get tired of seeing me. It's, I know I'm going to have to make a decision here on whether or not to leave all this in or take it out. Oh, we'll see. Oh, okay. Got the inside done. Let's do some thread painting and accentuate that outside. I am purposely not trying to hit my lines because I want a little more definition. So we'll go over it a few times. Now as you're going along, think about where you want your feathers to take off. So this again, this applique is coming out. So and this applique over here, this one over here, that's coming this way. So we've got 
we should have feathers coming in towards this. So I think what I'm going to do is just take an echo back. That's a short little echo. And come back over here. And do my little... And come on out. Pretty good. We'll echo on out here. And since we're coming down, let's start that right here. I'm gonna I touched that intentionally because I didn't stitch in the ditch here yet so let's get that done I don't know if I can get all the way down here nope but we can do this and we'll throw some feathers in the middle of there while we're in here And we're coming down, so let's do this. Now see how I missed that spine? Don't f with my stitching right there. So I brought my feathers up to it, and now it looks intentional. If I had brought this feather all the way over to here, it would have looked exactly like a mistake. So I missed with my echoing. So make it intentional and bring your feathers right to that rather than over here. Does that make sense? All right, moving on. If you make a mistake, just make it look intentional. And you can get away with so much. So let's throw a feather in here. And that looks like it's stitched already. So let's throw a feather in here. And oh look, we're back. We can continue that feather. Pretty cool, huh? All right, that's about as far down as I can go. So let's take this echo back up here. I got to get to this other side. So I could have tied off. I don't like tying off 50 million times. So I'm going to work my way down to this little tulip. And I'm going to stay on that side because... Here's my rail, so I can't go that far, right? I can't get to that bottom. So, but I can do this. And just get started on moving back out. And we'll start anew. See how that works? I just changed direction. And we're going to work our way out. So, I think what I'm going to do here, this is a lot of space. So, I think I'm going to shoot up this way so that I can work my way into here and then fill this in down here. So, my spine, I'm thinking, is going to be something like that. 
so that I can fill that in. That's not too far of a reach for a feather. And I can, just like before, just use that last feather as my spine. echo out and get see how that drew in a little bit it's just a little bit so it's always good to do your um, sides first but I get lazy you know so I'm gonna have to square this off anyway so cool huh that looks cool I think I think that looks cool all right so what are we gonna do here we've got Quite a bit. Um, did I tie that off? I did. Okay, good. All right, so we've got some space here where we need to come this way. So let's get in here again before I advance my quilt. Um, uh oh. I think I caught some. Sometimes I forget to trim my thread. And, um. Anyway. And it gets sewn in. So I'll have to trim that later. Alright. So we have this space, so again, here's my rail. So we have this space in here we're gonna do. So the direction of the applique is out this way, so we're gonna bring that out toward this little flower that we created. So let's start in here. This has all been ditched, so we're good to go. So I'm just gonna get out of the way and tie off my thread. All right. thing over here. come down here. Actually, that's about as far as we can go because again, I'm really close to my rail. So I think I'm going to tie off there. And, and again, that's pretty. Okay. All right. So this is the highest point here. So we'll just advance to there. Okay, all right, so let's see, we have, 
we got to ditch this yet. So this bottom side, I'm going to start here. Did I ditch that? Nope, didn't ditch that. So let's start here. As we go. And yeah, let's get this right now. And while we're over here, eh, let's just go back. Ditch that. Sometimes the less you have to worry about, you know think about like the ditching at the same time as doing some feathers it can be a little helpful so since this curved up let's let's get some feathers going up in this direction I think that would look nice so. come back down this side mostly because I have no clue where I'm gonna go at the end of that tulip and maybe if I do this side that'll inspire me how's that I'm gonna hold on to this side because it's not stitched down yet should actually do that first but all right so Let's change direction here. We'll come down and then we'll curve it up again. I think that looks nice when you change direction. And then we'll take this right on out. Oh, we'll do that. Down here. Okay. And we'll come back up. Alright, so where are we going to go now? I think we could just come right back in. I think that would be pretty. Actually, if we came... If we came into here and then spun around, where's my pen? Maybe echo back into here and then bring in and come back around this way. I think that would be pretty. Let's try that. So we'll echo back. And we'll come in this direction. So we'll make these a little smaller and we'll do something else on that side there.
Now with this, we're going to use that last feather as our spine for coming around here. All right? This is how we turn the corner. This is how I turn the corner. And it works, and it's pretty and it's clean. You know, it's not messy. And we'll come back, fill that in. All right, so we just did that pretty and now we're gonna yeah we'll come back into the middle and we've got the beginning of a flower right there see the little tulip right here so we want to stay away from that um and all right, hold on. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I did a couple lines here. I kind of so here's our flower down here. We want to stay away from that. And again, you don't want a straight line. You want a nice, gentle meander. So, and you want to fill in all your spaces. So. There's a, there's a little line here that I think might have... No, that's me. What am I talking about? I'm losing it, you guys. All right. So this tulip here, you can see it faintly, does have a stem. So I'm going to leave room for bringing feathers up um, on that stem. So I'm going to try and stay away from that. So we're going to move upward, move curve upward, it that way. Again, getting close to the previous. Now, see here, we're getting into kind of a straight line there, so we're going to have to do something and curve it. So, yeah, we're going to curve this down and then go back up and down. Yeah, you don't want a, you don't want a straight line. That's just really boring. that last petal as my spine and now I'm going to use this petal as my spine to round this corner and by doing that it just builds in a beautiful now this will be my spine again it just builds in beautiful curves to your quilting. See what we did there? Not very pretty. All right. So this is kind of the center. I don't know where I want to end here. end this just echo up here and start anew I just feel like this has been enough of a straight line that I'm gonna end right there and start something else I don't what I don't want is even a serpentine line going all the way across my quilt I want variety so since this applique is moving out, let's move this out and toward that. And they'll get to meet in the, in the center there. I think that will be interesting. Oh, do I 
have audio on. Okay. Oh, we're out of bobbin. All right, I'm gonna turn it off till I change my bobbin. Okay, we're back. I just changed the bobbin. Now remember, before you saw me take the bobbin out and clean the spring and clean inside it and oil the bobbin casing and and clean all that out. I do that every single time I touch my bobbin. Okay, so. That is really important. I think most tension issues are because of a neglected bobbin. <laughs> I don't know if that last one was necessary, but Anyway, I thought I'd go with that. All right, I'm going to tie off here because I want to get to the other side. I like to go with the flow of the... Um, so this is coming out. So we're going to do... We're going to come out and then we're going to come this way. This way over here. So let's do this first. So which way are we going to go? We have space to fill up here. And then we have another flower that we're going to add in here. So we need to fill a little bit of space. And I'm thinking I'm going to split the difference there. Come up. Nice curve there. And that'll come out to there. Yeah, and then when we come back, we can... All right, let's follow this curve right around here. Maybe something like that. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. So, do that.
Now this last curve here is going to be my spine going around this corner. I'm going to draw it all the way up and fill that space. And then we'll put more of a little one. And now we're back to our two sides. Right there's the corner of my leaf. So we're going to come down here. Because see there's the stem. I don't know if you can see that. But that's why I'm staying away from that. These may be funky petals, but, you know, if you do them consistently, it adds so much amazing character. Okay, now this petal, this top side, is going to be my spine for a little ways. And another petal. Now I drew a little branch right here. So we're going to do a little, because this is a lot of space and I don't know if I want my my petals to be that long. So normally you do a division feather. I'm having a bit of a, a moment here. So your division feather would be just like that little end cap, you know? And then you would use that to go right on around. And come back and come back to my spine. And follow my curve right on over. Right.